So I'm going to solve some uh, buoyancy uh, problems, which is the second part of fluid statics. Uh, so just uh, a quick revisit: what is buoyancy? What is buoyant force? So, so you have suppose uh, some fluid in a beaker, right, like that. So if uh, an object is submerged completely or partially, say here in this case, completely submerged like this, right, with the help of uh, string or something. So here's the you know, buoyant force. Uh, here's the uh, pressure forces acting on object, right? The pressure force increases with depth, and here's this is uh, this is the uh, pressure force on the top surface and uh, the pressure force. On the bottom surface like this right uh, all the horizontal pressure forces will cancel out because there's an equal and opposite forces from opposite side so horizontal pressure forces doesn't matter but there's a net upward force acting on the object because of the difference in the pressure force acting on the bottom the bo in the at the bottom the pressure force acting at the bottom will be always stronger than you know pressure force acting on the top surface right and because pressure increases with depth that's the main reason and that causes the buoyancy because there is a um, non-zero upward force acting on it in y direction right and that generates the lift uh, force on the object due to the surrounding fluid and that's the main cause of buoyancy and this we call buoyancy force of buoyancy and from Archimedes principle we can calculate the buoyancy force so buoyancy force is given by it says um, the volume of the fluid displaced this is the volume of the fluid displaced by the liquid density of the fluid given fluid and gravity so this is from Archimedes principle so we'll be using this uh, formula to solve this problem okay so what is this volume of the fluid displaced so suppose um, this is the liquid right without any object but if you submerge any object partially or completely, right? If you submerge an object partially or completely, uh, so this will <coughs> displace some fluid, right? The object will displace, and this is the volume, right? You can calculate this is the volume of the fluid displaced. Right. Uh, so, and that that's what you need actually to calculate the buoyant force okay back to the problem uh, so it says this 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter cube block steel block right is um, uh, is just suspended in air uh, with the help of spring scale the spring is in Newton scale Newton's so right spring is uh, the Newton's in Newton's the density of the oil is uh, 900 kilogram per meter cube so first question is what is the scale reading if the block is in air and first part is has nothing to do with the fluid statics it's just a uh, you know mechanics problem so let's draw the free body diagram first when the block is suspended in air like this I'm just gonna replace with this so uh, here's the free body diagram so you have mass times gravity you have tension in the spring right uh, I'm just gonna call T of spring and this is the scale reading okay whatever tension develops uh, on this spring right is the spring scale spring scale, scale reading is the tension scale and since there's no acceleration in y direction so if you just apply Newton's second law in y direction right this is zero so some of the force has to be zero because this is everything is in static condition. So some of the force is uh, T spring minus mg is equal to zero. So spring force, which is the scale reading, is just mass of gravity, which is just the weight of the block. But mass of the block is not given, but you are given the volume. You can calculate the volume of the block, which is 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter cube, uh, convert into meter cube, and density of the block, which is still, is also given. So, mass is remember volume times density of, right? Volume of the object times density of the volume of the object is 
10 by 10 so I'm going to convert into uh, convert into meters so 0 0.1 cube right 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 that's the volume in cubic meter and density of the object is 7900 so <clears throat> that's gonna be the mass so the scale reading which is the tension in the spring is this right uh, times <clears throat> this uh, this is this will give you 7.9 kilogram if you do so 7.9 times 9.8 so it's about 77 newtons that's that's the first part of the question so first part of the question is really easy actually just the mechanics question right okay so now second part now second part is now the same block is now completely submerged into oil right uh, oil density is given now what's the new scale reading so now again new free body diagram right so if you draw the free body diagram when the object is completely submerged so you'll have um, tension in the spring we call t prime because uh, the spring tension in the spring will be different than first case right uh, tension will be different which is what we are calculating and remember it's submerged in water uh, it's submerged in fluid so you have buoyant force we call f of b and you have mass of mass times gravity so that's the complete free body diagram and again there's no acceleration so again apply newton's second law in y direction and this in there's no acceleration uh, and some of the force however is t prime spring this is the new spring scale rating uh, plus force of uh, buoyant buoyant force um, plus uh, negative mg is equal to zero right so we're calculating this t prime spring that's the new spring scale and force of buoyancy is given by the Archimedes principle this so volume of the fluid displaced, uh, density of the fluid and gravity minus mass times gravity which is you can just put it 77 that's because from the first part your mg was the t spring right which is 77 newton which is you can just put it okay now again t prime spring is plus volume of the fluid displaced is equal to volume of the object why because it's completely submerged you can write down right it's not always the case but in this example since this object is completely submerged right the volume of the fluid displaced has to be equal to volume of the object itself because why is because the object is uh, completely submerged right under the fluid okay then just do this calculation so t prime spring volume of the object is again 0 0.1 cube right in meter cube density of the fluid is 900 so in archimedes principle formula this is the density of the fluid note that it's not the density of the object and gravity minus 77 is equal to zero so i'm going to do that here so the new spring spring scale reading so if you do this calculation is going to be 69 about 69 newtons right which is less than when the object is suspended in air which was 77 newton and that makes sense right because when you submerge an object into the any fluid it, because of the buoyant force it creates some lift force and because of that it always weighs less right you can clearly see t prime is less than t which makes sense okay here's the next problem uh, a piece of wood uh, with density 706 kilogram per meter cube is tied down uh, with the help of a string and is submerged completely inside the uh, water okay the wood is completely immersed and the wooden the volume of the wood wooden block is give, directly given uh, so it's asking what's the tension in the string okay uh, so the question here is string what's the tension in the string so then again 
you must draw the free body diagram clear free body diagram first so here's the it's tied down so the tension has to be downward not upward okay because this wooden block which is lighter than water try to float up right because its density is less than thousand uh, water density so it, it will try to float up but uh, the tension will keep it down right mm, uh, so that's that's why the tension must be downward so mass times gravity and what else so you have a buoyant, buoyant force is always upward okay yeah right and that's the free body diagram again there's no acceleration so you just need to apply Newton's second law which is force is mass times acceleration but there's since there's no acceleration right hand side is zero so some of the forces buoyant force minus mass times gravity minus uh, the tension right uh, which is what we're going to calculate okay uh, and <clears throat> So buoyant force is given by Archimedes principle again, which is which says the volume of the fluid displaced, right? Density of the fluid, gravity, right? And minus so mass of the this is mass of the block, uh, which is not directly given, but you, you're given the volume of the block, right? So it's volume of the block, volume of the object, density of the object, right? Which is density of the block because mass is volume times density and gravity minus tension is equal to zero and then you now uh, you put all the numbers all the numbers are given and then so the volume of the uh, fluid displaced again uh, is volume of the block why because uh, this wooden block is completely submerged it's not always the same case right but in this case actually because since this is completely summers volume of the fluid displaced by the object has to be equal to volume of the block so let me do uh, one more step is equal to tension so then that's what we are solving so volume of the block is given a tends to the power negative six that's actually given and density of the fluid which is 706 also given gravity minus second term is volume of the block again a tends to the power negative six uh, this is density of the uh, object uh, i'm sorry uh, this has to be 1000 this density of the fluid is density of water water density is 1000 so here density of the object is density of the wooden block which is 706 and 9.8 and that's it so that's the tension in the string which is holding it tight down here's the next question so this is again on buoyancy buoyant force but this is partially summer's example just like a um, floating you know iceberg problem so here this wooden block is floating partially uh, on this, um, it says sea water. Uh, right, the, the density of the sea water is given. Uh, this is uh, and uh, the height of the block under shamers under water uh, is say h, right? So it's acting. Uh, what what is the distance from the tip of the block to the water? It's acting d, right? So first you can find h and then subtract it's from the whole height uh, to get the d so how much how what is the distance from the tip of the block to the water so it's acting this this so here's the free body diagram right so there's only two forces acting here so this the weight of the block uh, is completely balanced by the buoyant force in this case because there's no tension and there's no other forces right so your free body diagram is this and then you apply newton's second law again this this is static condition so f of b a minus mg is equal to zero f of b is volume of the fluid which is displaced by the fluid density of the fluid gravity minus uh, mass um, of the block is again volume of the block density of the block gravity okay. 
but here these are not equal now okay so make sure you understand that right because the volume of the fluid displaced is not equal to volume of the full volume of the block why because this is partially submerged so how do you find the volume of the fluid displaced then you just need this volume right the volume of the which is submerged that's what you need so the volume of the block which is underwater uh, submerged is equal to volume of the fluid displaced which you need here and how do you write down write this down because we know uh, the length times width times height right this height is the height underwater so length and width are all this is block 0 0.1 times uh, 0 0.1 times width but you don't know this edge right, which is underwater so that's your volume of the fluid displaced that's what we want to keep it here so this volume of the fluid displaced here is uh, 0 0.1 0 0.1 edge First, we, we are going to find this um, height under water and subtract S from 0 0.1, 10 centimeter, right, to get D. That's the plan. So, density of the fluid, uh, which is the density of seawater, is 10, it says 10, use this, and 9.8, minus volume of the second term, volume of the block, which is 0 0.1 cube, right, because 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. And then uh, density of the block, which is 700, it says the density of this wooden block is 700 and 9.8 is equal to zero. So you, then you can solve for H, right? So solve for H from here. So you'll get, if you solve this, uh, you, you're gonna get 0 0.067 meter, which is about 6.7 centimeter. So, uh, out of you know 10 centimeters 6.7 centimeter is underwater so uh, what is the distance from the top because it's acting d right so then d will be the whole height is 10 because it's a cubical block 10 centimeter minus 6.7 centimeter so 3.3 centimeter is the answer so that much 3.3 centimeter is about water So here's the next problem. So this is on a buoyancy calculation on a hot air balloon. So hot air balloon, uh, you know, um, rises up and it's all because of the buoyant force. And if you can visualize, you know, these are the pressure forces, you know, pressure forces acting on the balloon, hot air balloon, you know, from all sides. And uh, the free body diagram, you have a free body diagram, you know, uh, as follows. So you have the buoyant force which is always in upward direction uh, and uh, mass of gravity so buoyant force here uh, is um, so if it accelerates up actually buoyant force is greater than um, mass of gravity so which we, we will have to calculate because it's acting the second part is acting was the vertical uh, acceleration right so here's the free body diagram these are the pressure forces acting on the balloon and it says uh, the hot air balloon which has a mass of 700 kilogram uninflated right including the portion it carries right uh, so that's the total mass of the the balloon fabric and the portion it carries when it, it is uninflated uh, the balloon when inflated has a volume of 2900 uh, meter cube the density of the hot air right so this is important. The density of the hot air inside the balloon is this, which we're going to need to calculate the, the total mass, you know. So first part is, is just asking to calculate the, what's the buoyant force acting on it. So then uh, we can just use the Archimedes principle, right? We, we know how to calculate the magnitude of the buoyant force, which is given by volume of the fluid displaced by the uh, balloon, and density of the fluid, and gravity, right? So in this example, uh, in this example, the density of the fluid is the density of air. Air is fluid now. In this case, air, your fluid system is air, the whole atmospheric air. So volume of the fluid displaced is equal to volume of the balloon when it is completely, uh, you know, inflated. And density of the air and gravity, right? 
and this is why the volume of the displaced fluid is equal to volume of the balloon because we can uh, assume that uh, imagine that the, the balloon is completely submerged in whole atmospheric air right you have the fluid system is atmospheric air and the balloon is completely submerged right in this uh, huge atmosphere so volume of the balloon is given to you directly it's 2900 and density of the fluid uh, the outside you, you're going to use uh, this the, den uh, the density of the air atmospheric air uh, not the hot air okay uh, so 1.22 and 9.8 so you're gonna get so you're gonna get a big number so if you do this calculation you're gonna get 34,672 newtons so this is the buoyant force the balloon gets and because of that it rises up okay so that's the first part of the question the second part of the question is what's the uh, acceleration of the uh, balloon so uh, so it will accelerate up if the buoyant force is greater than is the total weight right so first you're going to need the total mass total mass is the mass of the balloon when it is completely inflated right um, plus 700 so this is mass of the uh, balloon with air, mass of the air actually, uh, mass of the air inside the balloon actually, and plus 700 kilograms. 700 kilogram is the mass of the fabric plus the person um, right, hanging. So mass of the, I should say mass of the hot air actually, right. So which, how do you calculate the mass of the hot air? Then you have to use the volume of the balloon, right? And the density of the hot air, not the cold air, right? Because when it is completely inflated, the, the air has a density which is slightly less than the cold air, the atmospheric air density. That's why it is given to you. Uh, and uh, that's gonna, you just add the total extra mass 700 that's going to calculate the total mass that's what you need for free body diagram right so then then just apply a uh, newton second law first uh, you uh, uh, the volume of the balloon is 2900 the density of the hot air is 0 0.87 right is given plus 700 so that's going to calculate the total mass then from this free body diagram you can apply newton's second law the total force in y direction is mass times acceleration now here in this case uh, acceleration is not zero because that's what it is acting it's not neutral buoyancy right the buoyant force will be slightly greater than the its weight total mass. so you need total so then right uh, and the total force is, of course, the force buoyancy minus uh, mass times total gravity is mass total times acceleration. Okay, so this is from part one, 34,672. Total mass is this. So this total mass uh, and including that, if you do this calculation, it's going to get you three two one eight uh, kilogram three thousand two hundred one uh, three thousand two hundred uh, uh, eighteen kilogram and gravity nine point eight and <coughs> mass total again three thousand one eight times a y which is what we're calculating so a y so divide both sides by this right so three four six seven two minus three two one eight times 9.8 divided by uh, 3218 so if you do this calculation uh, you're gonna get acceleration at 0 0.453 uh, meters per second square so that should be your final answer and you can as you can see the balloon the hotter balloon will uh, rise up with a small acceleration this is a, a very little 
less than one meter per second square so the balloon will slowly rise up right with some with that much acceleration and which makes sense